this is Shadowing, bringing you another Shadowing rant. Today's topic is going to be an explanation. And I'm going to title it, The Reason Why Shadowing Does Not Adhere to Any Organized Religion, Specifically Christianity. So, let us begin, shall we? Now, no, Christians are not going to be enamored with this rant. Because I'm going to point out why I personally do not follow Christianity, as in the reading, worship, and belief in the Bible. Alright, let's take the Bible. And let's for a second believe that the Bible is indeed what Christians believe fact. So here we go. We'll start with Genesis. Genesis says that in the beginning God created everything. So some uh, magical dude spread pixie dust and poof, everything was here. Okay, great. Then he created man and woman created man out of the dirt of the land, created woman out of the rib of the man. Okay. You still with me? And then he told these children, because in essence they were children, the one thing that every parent knows not to do. You never tell a child, don't do something, because by that very virtue, they're going to go do it. And he said, you can eat of any fruit of any tree except the one right in the middle. And he asked them, you understand? Yeah, we got it. Cool. You, you sure you understand, right? Yeah. He said, okay, I'm going to make it even better for you. Don't eat of that tree lest you surely die. Now, remember these words, lest you surely die. Why would you tell something that you just created that does not know or have the concept of death taught to it anywhere? So I'm pretty sure Adam and Eve by this point are scratching their head. What is this death he is talking about? What is death? Well, we humans intrinsically know what death is. It's the cessation of biofunction. When your brain stops braining, you die. All right. So everything's cool, grand, wonderful, you know. And now it goes on that it says that a serpent tempts Eve with the fruit. It says, surely you shall not die. And again, here's this word, die, death. Why has God told you not to eat of this fruit? And Eve replies to the serpent, he says, do not eat of the fruit, surely you shall die. And the serpent says, surely you shall not die. No, 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 no. God is afraid because if you eat of this fruit, the fruit of life, really weird name to call a fruit that's going to kill you, you shall liken unto him. Hmm. And surely you shall not die. So Eve, beguiled by the serpent, basically takes a bunch of the fruit and bing, instantly knowledge. And gives it to Adam and bling, instantly knowledge. Okay, now they have knowledge. But what type of knowledge do they have? Well, if you read the Bible, that it says that Adam and Eve, upon eating the fruit, realize that they are naked. Yeah, I'm going to let that set in for a second. Naked. Not godlike, not omnipotent, 
not omnipotent, not immortal, naked. So they fashion themselves clothes from fig leaves. And God comes into the garden, searches for Adam and Eve, and they are hiding from him. Okay, so here's the two. They knew fear. Because they done did something that they perceive as wrong. So they know fear because now they did something as wrong, and God already told them, if you eat the fruit, surely you shall die. Then yes, don't worry, I'm getting to a point. So God finally finds them cowering behind some bushes, and he says, why were you cowering? And he says, for we were naked and did not wish to be naked in your presence. And God says to them, well, who told you you were naked? And he already knows. You done ate the fruit. You done did this already. It's, it's done. Now, okay. Let us revert back. He says, do not eat of the fruit of the tree of life, for surely you shall die. Is this what happens? Does God just smite Adam and Eve out of hand? No. 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 And the serpent that conned Eve into eating the fruit? Because basically that's what it was. It's the serpent came up, representation of the devil, conned Eve into the first sin, she ate the fruit, gave it to her husband. Okay, so what happens? Well, the serpent had legs. Four of them, to be precise. So God says, you know, to the serpent, you know, so for doing this, forevermore you shall crawl upon your belly upon the soil of the earth. He got his legs cut off. He said, hell, that's not too bad, you know. Serpents today are extremely well adapted for what they do. No, but you know, here I'm, I'm getting ready for it now. He's going to kill Adam and Eve because that's what he said that he was going to do. Kill Adam and Eve. Do not eat of the fruit from the tree of life for surely you shall die. Like, okay, if he kills Adam and Eve, he's going to start over. I mean, I'm thinking this, you know. And when I learned this, I was about seven, seven years old. And, yeah. No, he casts Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. Hmm. God just lied to me. And I know about a billion of you, when you watch this, you're going to tell all your friends, well, this guy said God lies. Well, he did. If you look at it contextually and look at what is actually written and the promise of death, if you eat this fruit, no death happened. Not for a very, 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 very long time. I mean, I thought, you know, lest you eat of the fruit of the tree of life, Surely you shall die. He just kicked him out of the garden. And he said, boop, bye. Eve, you're going to get pregnant. You're going to have to have sex. It feels good, don't worry about it, it feels good, but you're going to carry a child for nine months and then push it out through a hole that's not designed to do that. Well, if you look at it, actually, the hole the baby comes out of is designed to do that and can stretch up to the size of a rather large baby. I myself was nine and a half pounds when I was born. My mother had me au natural. So contextually, the Bible line, there's the first, first, but what did Adam and Eve, besides getting kicked out from the garden for eating of the forbidden fruit, what did they get? They got morality. 
know what I mean? The Bible doesn't explain this or tell you this or you know, anything like that. But you, the first thing they're concerned about is being naked. Naked, being naked is a matter of morality. It's not a matter of omnipresence. It's not a matter of um, all seeing, all knowing. It's you're naked, so it's against my morality to be naked. So this is the first instance of we get in morality. Now that I can get behind, I like more morality is, you know, what keeps a lot of people in check from doing something that sometimes you really, really, really want to do. It's your own set of intrinsic values and morals, what is right and wrong. I mean, even to simplify it even more, these children, Adam and Eve, learned right from wrong. They did wrong, so they got kicked out of the garden. Okay. But going back, God lied because he only kicked them out of the garden. He didn't kill them because, you know, I don't know why. So now Adam and Eve are out there, and now they're the only two human beings on the planet, if you believe the Bible. Now they have to take this ball of rock and populate it. There's a lot of people on this planet. And that's a whole lot of sex. The begets are massive. And the begets are basically like, I beget you, you beget me, we beget him, and we, he begets her, and her begets him. But the thing is, is like, okay, that's even more incest than is in all the incest films everywhere ever on the porn sites, on the internet. Think about it. Everybody, everybody is related to everybody else. That's a hell of a lot of incest. Yeah. They populated the world, fully populated the world. Let's say at the time, fully populating means three billion people in the world. Three billion people in the world. Three billion, two people made three billion people, so they made two hundred ninety nine billion ninety nine nine hundred and let me start over two hundred ninety nine billion nine hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety eight people in their lifetime. I find that a bit far-fetched, but let's continue. Let's, let's, let's say for sake of argument that, yeah, that's actually what happened. That two people were able to create two shy of three billion people. I mean, there's no way we can get an accurate census on that. It's happened a long time ago. Unless, of course, you believe in another fact that the Bible says is fact. We'll get into that in a bit. All right, so those people spread across the land and became the tribes of Israel. Thank okay. you. So then there's this guy. It's called Moses. We're going to skip straight to Moses. And he was raised Egyptian. He was an Israelite, raised Egyptian. All right, well, I guess it could happen, you know. And he was in line to become Pharaoh, along with another guy named Ramses. Ramses was jealous of Moses. So discredit him at every turn, but Moses was just better than everything. 
So one day Moses goes out and, 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 and sees a bush that's burning. And some ethereal voice talks to him, Moses, I am the God of Abraham. Moses was raised Egyptian. Pretty sure he probably wouldn't know who the hell God of Abraham is. I'm just saying. And basically tells Moses to turn from a life of comfort and excess and becomes a goat herder. And goes before the Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh, let my people go. Okay, here's what's wrong with that statement. First of all, Moses was raised Egyptian. So Moses' people were of Egyptian descent. The Israelites really not Moses' people. But okay, okay, okay. I'm making a lot of assumptions here. And just, you know. But it is just so contradictory. That somebody would go and see a burning bush in those times. A bush that's on fire. Hear a disembodied voice. And not run the hell away. N no. And then hear the disembodied voice tell you, tell you, I am the God of Abraham. Like, okay, you know, God comes to me and says, I am the God of Abraham. Which one? There are a billion of them. Abraham the Muslim, Abraham the Jew, Abraham the Buddhist, Abraham the Atheist. Which one? I mean, come on. Really? But he, Moses was given a job. He was to leave the Israelites out of Egypt. But to get there, God wanted to test the Israelites for 40 years in a fucking desert. You just liberated a bunch of slaves and now you're going to sit there and thin the herd by setting them there in a desert for 40 freaking years. And I know what people are, oh, but shadowing, they had to have hardship. Slavery. That's about as hardcore as you can get. I mean, seriously, honestly, really? And then 40 years in that desert, and then all of a sudden, God is supposedly to have visited Moses and says, come upon Mount Sinai, and there we'll, we'll, we'll have a coffee break. All right. So, you know, Moses goes to Mount Sinai, probably has absolutely no clue, and being though he's a typical guy, he's not going to ask for directions. Maybe that's why they were lost for 40 years in the desert. I don't know. Because, you know, Moses, no GPS. He gets to Mount Sinai, and he goes upon the mountain and talks to God. God bestows upon him his commandments. The commandments of God. This is a rule set you are supposed to follow. To honor God. Okay, great civil law. Great, okay, I can deal with this. Thou shalt not kill. <laughs> I laugh because you'll understand why later. 
and it, it'll be the main crux as to why I can't follow the Christian Bible. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is the act by which of you having sex with another man's wife. Alright, I can deal with that. Yeah. Thou shalt not steal. Now, we're not going to go through all the commandments because some of them are ridiculous. But it later goes on to say, well, if you need a loaf of bread, it's okay to steal that. Just don't steal any jelly. You can be forgiven for a loaf of bread, but a spoonful of jelly, you're going to get sent straight to hell. back to that first commandment thou shalt not kill now remember the wages of sin as stated in the bible is death the wages of sin is death now does that mean it's a spiritual death a physical death a morality death what kind of death it doesn't say all it says is that the wages of sin is death so if you break one of these commandments, you're going to die. Moses comes down from the mountain, comes down from the mountain, and, and, and God on his way down says to Moses, don't break these, don't break these tablets, you know. I may be an omnipotent celestial big daddy that can do whatever the hell I want, but you know, carving some letters into stone kind of tired me out so whatever you do don't break these tablets all right reasonable enough you know <coughs> now Moses gets down to the foot of the mountain sees his people they have made bronze idols of the calf of the ram they are worshiping craven images people are laying with other people's wives they are rampant stealing there's every they sit there and literally break all of the commandments in moses right in front of moses moses cast down the tablets upon the people crushing and swallowing the idols and the sinners and killing So Moses himself, <coughs> not an hour after getting God's law, breaks it. God's number one man. <coughs> and after God had told him, don't break the tablets. So I'm saying, man, damn, all right, so we're actually going to see God kill somebody now. Nope, mm -mm. What was Moses' punishment? Oh, because you broke the tablets, we're not going to allow you into the land of milk and honey. The promised land. Right? Okay. Fine, whatever. Great. So next we're going to go on to the Israelite wars. And this is where I have an issue with the Bible. Because the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. And it also goes on to expand on that particular commandment. Murder or killing someone in the name of the Lord is the worst possible sin you could ever commit. I only have to literally read this far every time. Every time put down the Bible and say, no, nope, not for me. The Israelites are at war. Okay, God's, you know, they pray and God comes to them and gives them battle direction. So now God's a tactical genius. And general of the Israelite army is saying, well, what shall we do? And God looks upon them and still and says to them, kill them all, be they man, woman, or child. 
ox, sheep, whatever. Whatever's there, just kill it. But the main three things to worry about is man, woman, child. Hmm. Where have I heard this before? Oh, yeah, it was that thing that happened in World War II called the Holocaust or Stalin's purges or something of that nature. You know, where, you know, Adolf Hitler killed Jews by the hundreds of thousands and Joseph Stalin just eradicated everybody who didn't view the world in his very narrow minded view. Now, here's the thing Hitler was a Christian, so was Stalin. Hitler was a Methodist, and actually a very devout and church-going Methodist. Now, do I believe that Methodism is a cursed religion? No. I believe that Christianity as a whole, there's something wrong when it's okay to moralize murder. And say it's okay because God told you it was okay. When he clearly states that murder in the Lord's name, ain't okay. It's a sin. The most grievous sin you could ever do. And he goes on to say that the wages of sin is death. Yet you have this entire Israelite army that just murdered everyone in a city. The old, the young, the baby, be them suckling, or just born, it didn't, you could pop it right out, there's a dude with a sword getting ready to cut its fucking head off, and you expect me to swallow this pill in divine morality, oh, God said it was okay, so it's fine, no, it's not, it's so not fine, it's definitely not fine, it must be okay because God said it. No, it's not fine. And if you find it to be fine, then you're a really messed up individual. And somebody needs to come along and pimp slap you until you realize that no, killing a child is not okay at all. In any religion, that condones the destruction of a child, an innocent, is divinely moral, is a fool. And you know it's funny, because I've heard things said about Islam, I've heard things said about you know Christianity, and, and, and Islam I don't hear anywhere in Islam that their sheiks are molesting children. So kudos to Islam. I don't hear in anywhere in Islam that their priests are making money off of a supposed non-profit organization. So again, kudos for Islam. But here we go with Christianity, Christianity as a whole, as a secular religion, Christianity. I'm not talking about one denomination, I'm talking about Christianity as a whole. Whoever reads the Bible and follows it and believes it is the true living word of God, you have to accept everything in the Bible. And until you do that, until you accept the good, the bad, and the ugly, there will be people like me to shove it in your face. That you say it is completely okay, and it is completely moral, and it is completely fine for a Christian to murder a child. Because God told you to.
But now normally I would stop right there. And everybody says, well, you're only focusing on Masonic law. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Jesus Christ comes down and dies for our sins, not according to most Christians. Look it up on YouTube. They've perverted the crucifixion of Christ. Hell, one church, one denomination, the Roman Catholic denomination, actually went so far as to say that Jesus Christ only died for original sin. The sin of being born. That is what original sin is. The sin of being born. So it is a sin because I was born. It's a miracle that I was made, but it's a sin for me being born. I guess I was supposed to be born through osmosis and just leak through my mommy's skin. I'm not sure. The biggest issue I have, and the reason why I don't hold Christianity in really high esteem, is this. People who, 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 who are supposed to be well versed in Christianity pervert the Bible to an extent every day where the Bible justifies every lie they can tell. Well, I can do that too. <coughs> you know, I mean, I've already seen these arguments debunked with scientific theory and all that. I'm not trying to do that. I'm telling you as to why I do not follow Christianity in particular. And why I do not find it in any way, shape, or form remotely useful in my day-to-day -day life. <coughs> priests currently right now are being indicted for pedophilia molestation of children priests currently right now are under investigation um, for being a non-profit organization and then turning around and banking over six million dollars a year from a supposed non-profit organization priests right now who own 17 million dollar houses and yet denounce the poor you know pastors preachers right now who quote passage from the Bible not wholly but just enough to justify what they want to say pastors preachers evangelicals right now stating that they can cure you with the power of God knowing full well that they ain't doctors and can't cure shit. Pastors, preachers right now praying on a person's fear. And making people believe, in essence brainwashing them to believe that only this God can help you. It says in the Bible, I don't exactly remember where, but it says God helps those who help themselves. It also doesn't say in the Bible, but it also says one of, one of my favorite uh, phrases is there's an ass for every seat. So if you want to take a seat at the Christian table, by all means, do so.
if you want to take a seat at a, a faith that moralizes and tells you it's fine to murder babies if God told you to do so you want to take a seat at a table with a, a religion that basically is so hypocritical of anyone who does not believe exactly what they believe. Do so. Oh, and don't bother asking questions in said religion. See, Christianity thrives on the method of confusing its parishioners. It's feeding them bulk lies and, 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 and then turning around and saying the exact opposite. The Bible itself is a book of, 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 of contradictions. You know, Thou shalt not kill, yet turn around and later on in the Bible, Christ, or not Christ, but a God is ordering the deaths of every man, woman, and child, be they, be they just born or suckling. And the wages of sin is death, yet turning around and again kill them all. Next time you go home, I want you to look in your child's eyes, if you have them, or look into the neighbor's child's eyes. Or hell, even look into your dog's child's eyes, your dog's eyes, and look and see. Does not that creature have the right to live as well? You're supposed to protect your child. You're supposed to nurture your child. But I have no doubt. I have no doubt that a lot of you would go out there and kill your children because you firmly believe that God told you to. And I hope, I hope, and I really hope, really hope, really hope that the true understanding and the true reason comes your way. Because right now, with the book you have been given and the book you are basing your faith on, you cannot make it into a faith because it contradicts itself way too much. Yet, Christianity is one of the most popular faiths in the world. Why? Because people preach it selectively. You know, I hear a lot of you going, eh? selectively? What do you mean, selectively? You can have a Bible study and study the same passages in the Bible for six years. You'll know that one passage in the Bible very, 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 very well. You can have a Bible study and study one book in the Bible for six years. But I guarantee you, you will never, ever, ever study a book in the Bible that is caustic and recriminating to the faith. Think about it. Every church, every faith organization has a hierarchy. Every church has a hierarchy. Every faith organization has a hierarchy. you get into the point where that hierarchy determines what the people believe and what they do. You know, be honest with your faith. I mean, don't try to hide your faith because if you have faith in something, by all means, have faith in it. But understand what you have faith in. And understand why you're being ridiculed in real life and why you're being ridiculed on social media sites and, and information gathering sites such as YouTube and Reddit and Twitter through the ambient news and stuff of that nature. Understand that because you parcel out your faith and you only use quotes in the Bible, 
to justify what you believe and not all of it. And then immediately turn hostile when somebody points out something that may be slightly inflammatory to the representation of your faith. Now, all faiths are guilty of this, some more than others. Islam is guilty of this. Christianity is guilty of this. Scientology is guilty of this. You know, I have no problem with people of faith. I don't have Islamic friends coming over and trying to convert me to Islam. Yet, almost every weekend, I have Christian people coming and trying to convert me to their faith. I mean, is your faith in that much trouble? Now, with some people on YouTube, I completely disagree with their stance on certain things. And I'll let them know about it. You know, but they have a different outlook on things than I do. Some people like to explain things scientifically, which is fine. Science is a great thing and a very helpful tool. But they seem to forget that there is also a human factor into things. How things are affected by a human factor. I have degrees in science. I have degrees in quantum mechanics. I have a degrees in thermal mechanics. I have degrees in cellular biology okay the issue is is that I don't care about the degrees I've never done anything with them and nor do I intend to I bring this to you from the heart not through science that's been done and science will wreck religion every time I cannot be a Christian simply due to the fact that your Bible tells me it is morally okay to kill children. I will have nothing to do with a religion that says it is morally okay to look a child in the eye and straight up murder them. That's it. That's all. Bye.